Hey everybody, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how one man can pour a concrete floor addition. So this addition here isn't, it isn't huge, but it's, it's pretty good size. I mean, it's about five yards and I'm going to pour it by myself. So my intention was when I showed up on the job is, you know, this guy really needed it done, this builder I'm working for. And I, I do a lot of concrete for this guy. So when I showed up, he happened to be there and he offered just to jump in and help out and do whatever he can because he knew I was there to get this done for him. And generally, you know, I'll show up with Darren and Luke and we'll pour this and then I'd leave one guy to finish and then we'd go do something else. But I already, we already poured something this morning, me, Darren and Luke, and I left them two guys there. And in order for me to get this done for Brett here, the builder, I had to come do it by myself. So. Brett offered to jump in and help out and do whatever he can, so I'm like, sure, you know, if you want to jump in, great. I mean, he didn't even have rubber boots on, but he was uh, he was just being nice and trying to help me out the best he could. So what I'm going to do is we're, we're matching the top of the wall. They put a frost wall in here because they were buttoning the addition up to an existing foundation, and everything's going to be tied in. The walls are going to be tied into the existing. The roof will be tied into the existing, so... The only way to really guarantee nothing will move is if you put the frost wall in. If we try to just put it on a slab, you know, there's, there's always a slight chance something could move later on down the road. Now we're pouring right on styrofoam here. This floor is going to end up getting some type of flooring over it. I believe, I believe Brett said it was going to get tile over it. So I'm going to show you, this is part one, I'll show you how I pour this by myself here. And then part two will be, I'll show you how I finish it. So make sure you come on back for that later on. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet so you'll be notified when that video comes out. Now what we're doing is we're pouring about a 3500 PSI mix. It's got three quarter inch aggregate. No air in this because it's interior. And it's about a, I'm pouring about a six slump, six and a half. But remember I got water reducer in this and the water reducer admixture allows me to pour a little bit looser mix without adding water. It, the, it's a chemical additive that actually helps loosen the mix up for me and just makes it easier to work with. So we get probably what three quarters of it poured out. Now I'm going to mag float my edges even with the top of the wall before I screed. What I found was when I when I started pouring this, when you when you pour a lot of concrete, you can tell when the concrete is cool, when it's warm, and when it's hot. And when this stuff showed up, I could tell it was a little bit warm. So it's, I mean, I know it's going to start setting up on me if I just take my time. So I'm going to be hustling here a little bit to make sure I just get this down in time before the concrete just starts setting up on me too fast. And you'll see when I come to bull float towards the end of the video, you'll see what I mean by that. I'll show you. Now I'm getting, I snapped a chalk line in there against the building, you know, even with the top of the wall. So that's what I'm mag floating my pad to in there. And then we're just going to, we're just going to screed off the top of the wall and then off my pad. I just magged up there by the building. Now Brett said he'd jump in and help me. I'd planned on just screeding by myself. I, I got, I got about a 10 foot screed here, but he said he'd grab an end and try to help me screed the best he could. So I'm kind of watching my end making sure I'm scoring and I'm, I'm getting down right and I'm also having to watch his end just to make sure he's screeding it the way I want him to I ended up getting it a little bit low in here so I gotta pull up some mud there's nothing worse than trying to screed when you're low having to stop and pull more in I'd much rather be a little bit high and have to pull it back And you can see as I'm pulling the screed there, I'm looking at my end, making sure I'm scoring. And then in, with my peripheral vision there, you can see I'm checking Brett's end to make sure he's not digging in or riding high, making sure this thing's coming out nice and level. And you can see we got that quite low. Must have been a little thicker in the middle than what it felt. So we're going to get some more mud dumped in there. Get it filled up. It just makes the whole the whole pouring process go better when you're not low. Now Brett's a general contractor. He builds he builds houses. 
additions, kitchens. He does all kinds of building. And I've worked, I've done concrete floors for him for years and years. So he's got the, he's actually remodeling this house here. This is a big old house. He's doing a ton of remodeling inside. And the people decided to do a, an addition here for something. I'm not sure what the addition is going to be for. So my job here is just this one day, come in, pour, and finish the floor. He's got a wheelbarrow there. He's got a little chimney pad he's going to pour too down off the side of the building. You can't see it in the video, but that's what he's got the wheelbarrow there for. So once we think we got enough concrete in there, we're going to attempt screeding again and get this thing down. I'm going to shrink that up at that side a little bit because the foundation, you can see it, it kind of juts out towards the wheelbarrow a little bit. So in order for my screed to reach the wall, you know, I got to shrink it in on that other side a little bit. I just couldn't seem to get enough concrete where I needed it in here. I had to keep stopping and pulling it up. That's, that's, talk about frustrating, you know, especially as long as I've done this. It's like, oh my God, get enough concrete up there. Come on. How many of you guys ever run into that problem? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. What's the, what's the thing that frustrates you the most about pouring concrete? Let me know down in the comments. You can see I'm kind of extending my pad over there a little bit so when when Brett grabs the end of the straight edge he can kind of go right off top of the wall. When when I screed with Darren and Luke, you know, we have we have the same type of screeding motion. So everything feels exactly the same when you screed with somebody new. The motion is different like they I always try to match the motion I'm, of the person I'm screeding with, but when you don't screed like this every day, you know, you, you don't know that stuff, so Brett's kind of going at his motion, and I'm going at my normal motion, which means the screed isn't exactly fluent, I guess, if you want to call it that, but it's it's good enough to get the, get it, the job done here. It actually took a little bit longer to screed than what I thought. Mostly because I kept getting it so low. I'm going to have to drop that chute down and get a little bit more concrete in here just to get enough to finish up. But the process, you know, is basically the same. Pour out your concrete, mag float your edges, get it screeded, get it down, get it screeded, and then you'll see how I'm going to bull float this. Now remember, I said I, it felt like the concrete was warm, so it was setting up on us a little bit. Not, not like crazy, not so fast that we couldn't get it down, but you could feel it. You could feel it in the screed. I could feel it when I was magging, and I'm definitely going to feel it when I bull float here, which I'll show you. Now Brett's going to get ready, and he's going to fill that wheelbarrow and then go start go dumping his chimney pad and then I'm gonna finish screeding this and then start bull floating it that's the way I planned on screeding the whole thing by myself right there I didn't know Brett was gonna be here today so so as I'm bull floating it, you know, I'm going back and forth over this, I can feel that. Usually I'll go back and forth, and that's usually pretty good. It, that'll usually be sufficient. Sometimes i got to go over it twice like I just did right there, and then I can move on. But what, I'm, what I can tell is, as I'm doing it, I can, I'm not really filling in all the screed marks, the stop and start marks with the screed as I'm bull floating. So... I'm going to have to go over it this way, then I'll go over it, I'll, I'll switch my direction and go 90 degrees the other way, and then you watch at the end my little trick, what I do to help 
make sure I fill in all those screed marks and, and make it nice and level and nice and smooth so when I come to finish this thing it's gonna make the finishing process so much better I got a little trick I'm gonna show you here coming up this is my old bull float too I have I have a lot better bull float with a knucklehead on it so I don't have to move the handles up and down but um, that was that's on my other guy's truck this is the old one I just keep on my truck in case I do have to pour something by myself I don't pour too much by myself anymore at my age I'm 56 you know when I was in my 20s and 30s I, I did a lot you know I would do 20 30 yard floors by myself if I had to but I try not to do too many more of them at this point so I don't know if you can tell if you can still see some of the screed marks in there I can see them a little bit but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a little bit of that extra concrete from where I screeded right there I would have had to take that out anyway and put it right on the bull float and add a little bit of weight to it so when I add a little bit of weight to the bull float and then I stop bull floating it really helps smooth out that surface when the concrete's starting to stiffen up a little bit. Just makes it bull float that much easier and nicer. That bull float's really kind of light, so there's not much weight to it. If you add a couple pounds to it, like I did, it's gonna it's gonna bull float out much nicer. So, how many of you guys use that little trick? Let me know down in the comments too. You could put anything on it for weight. You know, I've put. A couple rocks on it before or bricks even some of those metal stakes I use sometimes for setting up a slab I'll put them on it if I have to now that's that's gonna smooth it out really nice then I'm gonna mag float out my edges and I'll be pretty good after that So that's basically how one man pours a concrete floor addition by himself with a, a little bit of help from the builder. <laughs> if you guys, you know, if you guys want to learn how to pour concrete like like I do, you can join the Concrete Underground. The link is down in the description below. I have all kinds of trainings in there teaching you about all the different types of concrete that I pour about how to run your own concrete business and you know how to pour and finish concrete that's all down there in the concrete underground guys you can see how many times I went back and forth over that now I finally got it smoothed out now all I gotta do is just smooth out my edges and I'm gonna mag float that make sure where where Brett screeded make sure those edges are nice and level and flat before I before I just leave this to harden up and come back and finish it later you can see I had to dig out a tiny little hump there and fill in a, a little low spot we don't normally get those when we screed but when you're screeding with somebody new that's that's pretty normal but that's the basic process you know if you're if you've got a little addition like this you're gonna pour it yourself now you kind of know what you're up against, how much work it's going to be, how much time it's going to take, how fast you got to move. It's it's really not as easy as it looks. It looks like it might be kind of easy, but there's quite a process to it. And you kind of want to have a little bit of idea what you're up against before before you just jump in and do it. And that's why I make these videos. If you guys like these videos, you know, if you think they're offering you some, some value, please smash that like button. I'd really appreciate it. But you can see how I'm making sure everything's nice and smooth before I just leave it and let it firm up. Before I come back and start my finishing process. I want to make sure everything's nice. Everything's smoothed out. And it's right where I need it and I want it before I come back and start finishing. So... That's the basic process, guys, how to pour a concrete floor addition by yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.